<laughs> Welcome back YouTube. This is Dave with Injection Molding Skills and More. Sorry. Um, just wanted to go over today. We're actually going to go over screw components. Um, what actually is inside of the barrel. Um, I thought I'd change it up. The last couple of videos I've done has gone over troubleshooting skills on different issues like burns, flash, stuff like that. So this one actually is going to go over the screw components. So let's just jump into it and get started. Um, I hope everyone's good and safe with the coronavirus thing going around. So, but what I wanted to go over was screw. So this is what it looks like inside of a screw. So you have your feed zone, which takes up 50% of the screw. Then you have the transition point, which is 25%, and then your metering area. Then you have up here, you have your tip, and then you have your check ring, which I'll go over that a little bit. Then you're back here, you have your spline, which that engages into the screw motor. Actually, there's a motor back here that actually does that. Um, you'll have your different flights, your, you'll have your different pitch and your diameter of everything. So this is kind of an overall blueprint of what it looks like. Okay, and then I do have a video um, that shows you more detail of how this actually all works together and how it really does. Um, so let me show you guys these, um, these tips that are on the very end of the screw. So you have a mixing screw. This is the actual regular check ring. This is a check ring. This is a ball ring is what they call it, which really um, in the industry, a lot of people don't use this anymore. They just use a regular check ring. And there is, I think one other style more, I'm not hundred percent sure, but these are the ones I've used in my career. So I wanted to show you guys that video. As it enters the injection barrel, it is driven forward by the rotation of the screw, which is powered by the hydraulic motor. The resin plasticizes or melts as the turning screw drags it towards the nozzle end. This is referred to as drag flow. Drag flow causes the polymer molecules to slide over each other, creating frictional heat which melts the material. External heating bands provide additional heat to the injection barrel. The heating bands bring the material to its final temperature and compensate for the radiation heat loss. The temperature is controlled by three thermocouples in the barrel and one in the nozzle. The screw consists of three zones. The first zone, which is one half of the screw, is called the feed zone. It has a constant flight depth, which forces the material together and rids it of air. The second zone, called the melt zone, has a decreasing flight depth, which reduces the plastic volume. This causes the plastic molecules to rub harder against each other, plasticizing the material. The melt zone leads to the third, or metering zone. The metering zone has a constant flight depth much smaller than that of the feed zone. This section acts as a pump. The tip of the screw has a one-way valve which lets the material flow only towards the nozzle end. The force of the plasticized material pushes the screw back as it turns. This builds a chamber of plastic in front of the screw. When enough material for the injection shot is melted, the screw stops and pulls back to decompress the material. For injecting the material, the one-way valve closes as the screw is hydraulically pushed forward by the injection cylinder. This sends the molten material through the injection unit's nozzle and into the injection mold. What's up guys? This is part of the video. I wanted to show you guys a real screw on the floor, so check this out. So here is a actual screw. This here is actually the check ring. You can see there's plastic inside of there. This is what it looks like overall and you can see how these pitches are how as it goes back they get bigger and bigger as it goes back so you can see how deep they get so this would be your feed zone right here that's the spline where it gets connected to right there and then you can see how deep each of the the feed zone then the transition zone is really dark because that's where it really melts it down really good 
and then you can see as it gets bigger down here at the end these get smaller because it's pushing all that material in front of the screw in front of the tip head right here so like i said this is what we run the most of is just a regular standard check ring they do have ball rings but just to let you guys see that so all right well i wanted to show you guys what a mixing screw looks like so this is what a mixing screw on the tip looks just you put your tip on the end of here and then this will be the mixing part so we do tons of color changes here um we run anywhere between 100 to 150 different color changes so you can see the mixing screws um different varieties of them and like i said remember you got your pitches are different so the smaller back here deeper as you go down the screw back to the spline area and then the splines are totally a little different depending on the press the make and model of the press so you got to remember that so i hope you guys seen that video see how you know the components actually work on it how the screw actually moves the material forward um and all that um this is the different tips that you have at the very end so you have a general purpose tip you have what they call a full tapered tip and then you have a nylon tip and you can see these so what it is is this is what you call a tip that goes in the very end of the barrel that actually shoots all your material through this um, this one here is a general purpose tip so if you look in the in the hole you can see it's just a straight shot straight through what happens is, is this is like the general purpose one right here then you have a full taper then you have a nylon tip there is an actual a couple other style of tips that you can actually get to which one i'll show you one hang on a minute let me see let me walk over here this is what they call a spring loaded a shut off nozzle tip okay so if you look at this one you can see that it's got a spring inside of here so it forces material into here pushes that spring forward then when it relieves it just automatically the spring shuts it back off this is good in case you have drool you know um your decompression don't work on your tools or on your press and you got an older style press um it, that helps out a lot so but i just wanted to go over some of the screw components again um i thought i'd do something a little different this time uh next week i'll probably do something that maybe like a machine setting like uh back pressure what is back pressure so i hope everyone stays safe with the coronavirus uh please like share and subscribe Till next time, peace.